Welcome to First United Methodist Church Richardson Online. I'm Rohini Drake, Director of Online Ministry here at FEMCR, where our mission is to welcome people for Christ, grow people in Christ, and serve people with Christ. We're so glad that you're joining us wherever you are and whenever you found this video as we gather to worship together today. This week, we conclude our worship series called Do Unto Others as we have focused on what it means to be in community with our neighbors and learn what God's best practices are for interacting with each other, even when we sometimes don't see issues from the same perspective. To coincide with this new worship series, the new season of the More Than Sunday podcast has been leaning into the theme of Love Served Here as we took this show on the road and have been featuring some of your favorite restaurants and organizations that are building community around food. They've been sharing some of their secrets for being good neighbors and showcasing some of the most popular items on their menus. We hope that you join us this Wednesday for a new episode. You can find it on your favorite podcast platform or on the FUMCR YouTube page. After having some conversations with so many wonderful restaurants and organizations, the More Than Sunday team was inspired to try and build community around food. And we'd like to invite you to join us on Wednesday, November the 20th for the first More Than Sunday meetup at Locacy to Bake Shop here in Richardson. For more information and to let us know to save you a seat, text us at the number on your screen. Today, we have an opportunity to participate in the Sacrament of Communion in our worship services, both in person and online. As United Methodists, we have an open table, which means anyone who would like to participate is welcome to do so. For some, taking communion at home may be new or feel a little bit strange, but I want to encourage you to participate in whatever way feels most comfortable and authentic for you in your faith journey. Take a moment to create a special or sacred space in your home to receive the sacrament. All you need is a small piece of bread or a cracker and some juice or water for each person who will be participating. Now, as we continue in worship, will you please join me in reading these verses from the book of Matthew? When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hello everyone, I'm Miss Wendy and I am so happy to be with you today for children's time. Today, we are going to do the five finger prayer. When you put your hands together in front of you, you will notice that the closest finger to you is your thumb. Since this is the closest to you, it reminds you to pray for those who are closest to you. Your next finger is your index or pointer finger. Use this finger to remind you to pay pray for people who point you in the right direction. Pray for your teachers at school and at church. The next finger is your tallest finger. This finger reminds us to pray for our leaders. Pray for the people that lead our country, our schools, and throughout the world. The fourth finger is called the ring finger. This is the weakest finger. Let this finger remind you to pray for those who are sick. The next finger is the smallest finger. This is the little finger called your pinky. Let the little finger remind you to pray for yourself. So will you join me as we use our fingers to pray for those saints who have come before us and all of those who surround us today? Dear God, we pray for people who are close to us. We pray for people who lead us in the right direction. We pray for people who lead our country and world. We pray for those who are sick, and we pray for ourselves. Help us to spread your love throughout. Amen. Thanks, friends.
Thank you so much to our music team for the great music. I'm Clayton Oliphant, and it's a joy to have you as part of our online ministry at First United Methodist Church, Richardson, Texas. You'll see a number at the bottom of your screen, and let me invite you to take a moment to uh, let us know who you are and where you're worshiping from. You can text us that information to the number below. That's also a number you can use for prayer concerns at any time during this service. If you have any prayer concerns you'd like for us to be praying about, we would love to be praying for you and lifting you up. I wish you could have known Jim and Michael. They were, um, they were in an older adult Sunday school class at one of the churches that I served, and they were uh, legendary for their debates. Uh, Sunday school, people would come to Sunday school and it was like, get your popcorn ready, because some topic would come up in Sunday school and the teacher would lay out some things and then those two would ask questions and end up debating each other. Um, Jim was was uh, very progressive in his ideas and thoughts. Um, Michael, it was known, was very conservative in his ideas and thoughts. So Jim was was a Democrat. Michael was a Republican. They, uh, if you watch them debate in Sunday school, they never attacked each other personally, but they always they had were both very skilled in uh, debate. They were um, actually amazing at tearing down the other's arguments and then building up their own in, in ways that made you think. And the class loved the interchange between the two, and they were two, uh, two characters who were also men of great character. They also happened to be best friends. They had been best friends for more than four decades. They had been in that Sunday school class. They'd been in that church. They'd raised their families together. These two men loved each other. And so it was a shock to everyone when uh, Jim died suddenly of a heart attack and Michael was asked to speak at his funeral. And as Michael spoke at his funeral, he talked about their friendship and their love for each other. And he said, we're probably the two most unlikely people to be friends. We never agreed about anything. We never voted the same way once for any, any candidate, but we loved each other. And, and Michael said this at the funeral, I'll never forget. He said, the reason our friendship worked is because we were Christians first. You hear that? The reason our friendship worked is that we were Christians first. You know, they didn't consider themselves uh, a Republican Christian and a Democratic Christian they considered themselves Christians first, who happened to have different political philosophies, but two men who loved each other and who modeled for that Sunday school class and for many of us in that church, what it meant to love your neighbor as you love yourself. I hearken back to their example because uh, Jim and Michael modeled for their Sunday school class and for their church uh, something that, that I think is so badly needed in today's world. In a world that, that often divides us and, and pushes us further apart, these two men who didn't agree about a lot of things found common ground in their faith in Christ. It was the love of Christ that drew them together. They focused on the basics and it made all the difference in the world. I think about what Jesus said are the basics of our faith. And, um, you know, you think about uh, all the laws in the Old Testament, 613 uh, laws in the Torah. I sat with a rabbi several years ago and, and uh, trying to explain uh, the Jewish understanding of the law and the Torah. And, and he said to me, he said, there's 613 commandments, 365 of those are negative commandments. That is to say they are, thou shalt not, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not commit adultery. There are 248 positive commandments. That is, thou shalt remember the, the Sabbath day and keep it holy. You shall honor your mother and father, positive commandments. Um, so you think about those 613, and, and he explained further that there are 365 days in a solar uh, calendar year, and then 248 was believed to be the number of bones and organs in the human body. 
And so you put that together, and he said the understanding of the law is that every day of your life, with all your being, with all your makeup, you serve the Lord. That that's the understanding of the law. The law was designed to help us focus with everything in our being, every day of our lives, on the love of God. The, uh, the Pharisees challenged Jesus about this. Which, which of these 613 laws is the most important? Of all those laws, and I think they're trying to trap Jesus at this point to catch him uh, saying something wrong. And Jesus, Jesus goes back to two of the 613. It's, he's going back to the basics. It's like you think about Vince Lombardi, who was a famous football coach who uh, after, after his team had lost a big game, he, um, he gathered the team together as they, as they uh, were beginning the next week of practice. And he said, gentlemen, we're going to go back to the basics. And he held up a football and he said, this is a football. Now you think about that. I, I love that story because it's like, let's get back to the basics. And Jesus took the Pharisees when they asked of the 613 laws, which is the most important. Jesus went back to the Shema, the, the, the basic prayer of, of Judaism. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul and your strength. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, the Lord is one God, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your strength. That is the understanding of the, the Jewish law. It's first and foremost. But then Jesus added a second to it from Leviticus. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. All those 613 laws hinge on those two. Love God, love your neighbor, love yourself. So if you are really trying to understand what does it mean to be a Christian in today's world, in a world that seeks to divide us at times, in a world that is difficult to express um, who we are as, as followers of Christ, we choose to focus on the basics. We go back to the basics. It's Jesus saying, gentlemen, this is a football. He's saying to the Pharisees, this is the most important thing. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength and love your neighbor as you love yourself. On this All Saints Sunday, as we gather around the Lord's table, we think about those who've been a part of our lives, those who've been a part of our church family. And a little bit later in the service, we'll see the pictures and images of those um, beloved people that we've lost this last year. And it also brings to mind others in our lives who have shown us what God's love looks like in action. And we think about what is it, what is a life, what's the impact of a life really? Is it, is it your political affiliation? It is, is it your job? Is it your bank account, uh, amount in your bank account? Is it the car that you drive or the house that you live in? Or is it something more basic than that? Is it the love that you receive and share? And as we think about these, these wonderful saints, we, we gather at the Lord's table today knowing that they reside at that table above and together in the mystery of God's grace, we are bound together in love. At its most basic level, we have a God who loves us and who calls us to love each other even as we learn to love ourselves. As you receive this meal today, I hope that you will think about those people who blessed your life, the people who showed you what love looked like. More important than their politics, they showed you the love of Christ. And as we gather at the table today, we remember them and we give thanks for their lives as we receive this, this bread and this cup. We're grateful that God put them in our pathway and we were blessed by their love. And that love never dies. Love leaves behind more than death can ever take away from us. So as we gather at this table today, it's going back to the basics, the love of Jesus, the love of God for all of us.
poured out for us through Christ our Lord. So we remember that night long ago when Jesus gathered at the table with his disciples and there he took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, he gave it to them and he said, take and eat, this is my body given for you. When you do this, remember me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to God. He gave it to his disciples and said, take and drink all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. When you drink this cup, remember me. So we gather today along with those who've gone before us in this mystery of the communion of the saints. And we pray that God's Holy Spirit would fall upon these gifts and fall upon us that as we receive these gifts, we may be reminded of this incredible love that has been poured out for us and that we may in turn learn to love each other as we love ourselves. Pray God's blessings upon you as we receive this meal, that you think about those beautiful saints who blessed your life and know that we share that mystical communion with them as we break bread together. I invite you to receive this gift uh, of, of God's grace. Let's pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We now remember those members of our church family who have died since last year. On this All Saints Sunday, we give thanks for their lives. We celebrate the love that we shared with them. And we claim that that love is still alive and will never die. The same God who raised up his son, Jesus Christ, has promised to raise us up with him also. And so we know there is an eternal quality to love. We know that beyond death, there is more that awaits us. We celebrate these saints and give thanks for each of them.
not alone You are not You're not alone I upon the mountain Fathoms from the sand A breakdown in the cold Stranded on the side of the long and tired road I would drive for miles out in the failing light Thank you so much for joining us in worship. A quick and easy way you can support the mission and ministries of FUMCR is to just like this video and subscribe to the FUMCR YouTube channel. By liking this video, it'll help others find this worship service who may not otherwise see it. And by subscribing, you'll also make sure that you never miss out on any new content. If you'd like to make a financial contribution to support the ministries of FUMCR, including this online worship service, you can visit the link on your screen to give. We truly appreciate your generosity and support. Thank you again for being with us today. We're so grateful to spend this time together in worship with you.